to our channel. I'm Rachel. And I'm Nikki. And we are the Stitch Sisters. This is the lockdown version of the Stitch Sisters where we are relying on the wonders of modern technology to try and bring you videos together. Um, so you have to bear with us. There will be lags, there will be glitching. There will be times when we have to wait for it to catch up. Um, and you might have to listen a little bit harder to whoever's in the tablet. <laughs> But we're going to do our best. Yes, that's you right now, but in a minute, it'll be me. <laughs> so for today's video, we are going to try and bring you a fabric haul. So uh, I only have a few things to show you today, uh, but Nikki has quite a lot of things to show you because she's been having a little splurge, haven't you, you naughty girl? <laughs> I, I have, yes. Um, Yes, so we both have quite a different approach to fabric buying and I'm sure that there's going to be half and half of you out there So you have to let us know in the comments below what kind of fabric buyer you are So Nikki loves a splurge. She loves a sale. She loves to build her fabric stash and Stroke yeah. it and caress it and just roll around in it <laughs> it's, it's the excitement of it as well it's the excitement of finding something that you fall in love with and just the joy of it coming through the post and everything like that. But also, I have bought in the sales, but I have tried to buy from small independent fabric shops yes. in the UK. So I've tried and I've done it kind of, I wanted some fabric and I thought, well, why not buy some now if you want some and support those companies that are struggling at the moment. Absolutely. So that's Absolutely, and I think that's great. Um, and and, uh, and and to be honest, in the last couple of years, I've just become a little bit more. Um, I don't know, frugal is the right word, or kind of selective with my fabric buying. So yeah. I I spent too long with a stash that I just wasn't using, and what I was finding is that when I did want to sew something, I was not finding the right fabric. So I was then going to buy a fabric for that project. So instead, right. what I try and do now is just to buy uh, fabric when I have a specific project in mind, buy the, the fabric with all the bits that I need, and then I've got that ready to go to sew the whole project. Um, and yeah. I am finding that I'm using more fabric that way. It doesn't mean to say that I haven't still got a fairly decent sized fabric stash that I like to stroke and caress and I'm hoping that I'll find a use for all those fabrics at some point um, but I'm just trying to be a little bit more selective but like I said we all work in different ways and uh, and it'd be really interesting to hear from you are you a stash builder or a fabric hoarder or are you a selective project focused buyer of fabric um, or are you both? I, I think you can be both and I think it just depends Oh, hold on, we've lost you. She's Sorry. back! Ta da! I'm back! <laughs> so I was just going to say, I think that people can be both depending upon circumstances. So for me, it changes through the year. Sometimes I want to buy fabric just for the sake of it. Other times I'm really using my stash. Other times I'm buying for specific projects. And I think it does vary through the year. Yes. So you can be a bit of everything, really. So yes. Nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with any of them. Nothing wrong with any of them, no. <laughs> Although, uh, Nikki's style of buying right now certainly is more suited to a fabric haul video. She's got a lot more to show you. <laughs> so, we're going to do a little switcheroo now, and, uh, and Nikki can show you and tell you all about the fabrics that she's bought. So, should we do a click? You ready? One, two, three. So let me show you my lovely fabrics that I bought in my little kind of January splurge. I felt the need for some prints in my life. I've spent the last year buying plain fabrics and I just wanted a few prints. I wanted to have something that was a bit fun and I was in the mood for some frivolous sewing. So even though we're locked down, I just felt like I wanted to sew a dress, I wanted to make something that felt glamorous and I was excited to put on, so I wanted to buy some new fabrics. But not only that, I was, a, I was actually trying to buy from small independent retailers in the UK, small fabric shops who I know are struggling at the moment, so I was sharing some love around, some fabric love was shared around the community. <laughs> Before you show us the fabrics, yes. can I ask 
pop because I'm obsessed with that fabric. This is um, a fabric from Fabric Godmother that I got. It is a few fabric shops have got it, but you can see that it's a kind of a grey but with a slight blue tinge to the background, and then this two tone pink on top. And it's the Somerset tea which I made in my stripy rainbow fabric a few months ago. And it is my go-to because you've got big sleeves, but I love the big cuff and it's just a great fit for me. And I'm wearing my rainbow necklace that I got for Christmas. So that's a Christmas. I know it clashes, but I like I like the clashiness. It's not, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so red and pink and leopard print. Um, I think you need to give that top necklace. <laughs> Um, no, you can maybe get in a different colourway. <laughs> I know, it's just such a comfy top as well. It's a really good fit. I like the neck, everything's perfect. So it's one of my favourites. So maybe I'll make you one. <laughs> right, should we do some fabrics? Yes. Right, so I'm going to start with, I know in one of our previous videos before Christmas, I talked about making my yellow raincoat and I bought some fabric from Like So Amazing but I just didn't have enough so I tried to cut it out. It was the very end of what Sarah had left and it just wasn't enough to cut the raincoat with the hood and everything out of it. So I just relented and bought some different fabric. <laughs> so I went to Ray Stitch, I've still gone for yellow. But this is more of an oil cloth. It's like a waxed cotton. I'm trying to show it to Rachel as well. But you can see that it's a bit stiffer. It's a bit more of a, rather than a rubbery ring coat fabric, this is more of a kind of a cotton, like a wax cotton or something like that. So I have actually cut the whole thing out. This is just what's left. So I'm very excited to be starting that this weekend. So that's my next sewing job is to start my raincoat. But this is a lovely fabric from, um, from Ray Stitch and they've got it in a couple of different colorways. So definitely check that out because they've got a really lovely range of fabrics and they're one of my, one of our favorite fabric shops. Yeah, it's a proper sunshine yellow, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is and I've got a pink, like a pink multicolored stripy jersey lining to go with it. So it's going to be a real kind of, you'll see me in the dark. I'll be glowing in the dark. Midnight <laughs> dog walks. Uh, you'll see me. <laughs> so on to the stuff that I bought as well recently. Now the background of this is I just wanted some prints. I wanted to buy some stuff I fell in love with. And I'll, what I'll do is I'll put up some inspiration picks because I have bought some some patterns but i haven't quite matched pattern to fabric yet or anything like that so we're going to start with um this is fabric from samantha claridge and she's someone that i've just found recently on instagram and she's got a lovely little fabric shop it, i think it's most it's all online well obviously i bought it online um and there was a few fabrics in there that i fell in love with starting with this one and this one was love at first sight because it's black and white leopard prints with these hot pink little diamonds on it. And it's a viscose. I don't think it's got any stretch in it or anything. So I've, what I've tried to do is buy, it has got a little bit of stretch in it, so they would be quite forgiving. Um, but it's such a lovely heavyweight fabric as well. So it, I think it would just be such a gorgeous dress. So again, long sleeve, I'm thinking maybe like an 80s puff sleeve or something, something really yeah. like massively standout-ish. So I'm obviously... When you look at it, do you see hot pink diamonds or do you see leopard print circles? I see hot pink diamonds, but now that you've I said, oh. now that you said hot leopard print circles, I, I'm flitting between the two. So what do you see? <laughs> So that was love at first sight and I had to have it. And I think I've tried to buy three meters of each of these just with the thought that if I need to make it long sleeved and make the sleeve a statement sleeve and make it long and add a frill, I've got enough to play with to do all of that. So that was the plan with this one. And then the next one is just a little peach skin. And again, I fell in love with the colors. 
So this one is kind of oh, like, kind of yeah, so that kind of pale blue, and I've gone for, I'm doing animal prints. What's going on? Clearly I needed some animal prints in my life, but I just thought the color was stunning. That pale orange with that little bit of pink and the blues, I just thought was beautiful. And I thought it might be something like a pussy bow blouse or some kind of, yeah. maybe just a simple box top like with a v-neck or something, some with a little cap sleeve, something that just allows the fabric to sing because I think it is just gorgeous. And it wasn't very expensive. It was in the sale and I just fell in love with it. So I think I've got just slightly less than two meters on that one. So it will be a top rather than a dress. So that's the plan for that one. I know we've not done our spring, uh, we've not done our autumn or spring trends this time, and we haven't necessarily been feeling very much trend led. But I do, I have had a cursory glance every now and then, and bold, colourful prints and animal prints are definitely still very much a trend. So, so you've done that without even. Woo -hoo! I'm winning, I'm winning. <laughs> so, this one is, uh, is a cotton, so it's a poplin. And again, I thought I would just look at my hexes. How can I not buy that? So, yes. it's, uh, it's crying out for a shirt. And I'm thinking some kind of um, long line, simple, like almost like stealing your husband's work shirt kind of thing. Something soft. Um, so either that, or again, I'm thinking these kind of like a, uh, like a boxy top with a V-neck, but I think I've got two or three meters of that. So I may be able to squeeze a couple of things out of it. But again, it's quite crisp. Yes, it's lovely. It would be perfect for your scraps. If you've got any scraps, put it in a hoop and embroider the stripe <gasps> in different colours. Yes! Oh, don't. I'm going to have yeah. to make sure I keep some for that. But there will be scraps enough to do that, definitely. There always is. There's always leftovers. But it's such a lovely... It feels really cool when you touch it. It's got a really cold hand to it. So I think it will be a lovely top to wear in the, in the spring and summer. So that was that's my probably yeah. my most... Um, calm my calmest fabric of the ones that i've bought so <laughs> those three were from samantha claridge and i'll link everything below to our website she's always got she's also got a really nice instagram feed that shows about her fabric as well so go and check her out the next two are from fabrics galore and i have found myself buying from them quite regularly um again i just think they're you know when you find a fabric shop that kind of suits you like you will always yes. find something that that's that's my taste and i think with them they kind of just hit it right on my button so again i've gone for <laughs> so this is another this is another it's a viscose crepe but it's got such a beautiful drape to it and it's a slight off white um with this black leopard print spot and I just love the monochrome. I think it would just be stunning. So again, I'm thinking, I, I, these dresses I'm just imagining in my head, but with 1980s sleeves, cuffs with buttons on, and you know, all the, all the floatiness and all the swooshiness. And that's just crying out to be made. Look at that, it's beautiful. Lovely. So again, it's it an, another one in the sale. Gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it. Love it. Excellent. That's another one that's mine. <laughs> all yours, darling. <laughs> so this is another one, which is Fabrics Galore. And I'm going to show this to you. So this is feathers this time. And my, my colourways again. Oh, love those colours. Absolutely gorgeous. You know, I just said they're all yours. Yeah. <laughs> Is this one coming to you? <laughs> oh, so it's another crepe. It's, I think it's a double crepe. So it has got a good weight to it. So it would be quite a nice sort of spring dress. So I'm just thinking again, something maybe with a long sleeve or maybe kind of like a three quarter length sleeve or a little cap sleeve. That in the spring, what I would do with the lighter fabrics, I'd maybe make them a slightly shorter sleeve because then they're more suited to that kind of time of year. So again, I yes. just fell in love with this, and it's just the color, just the color. To, oh, hold on, I think. Oh, I've lost her. She's glitching. Oh, Are you back? I think I'm back. She's back. I think so. 
Okay, were you going to say something? <laughs> um, I think I would make something, I, I can imagine like a 70s inspired maxi dress. <gasps> yes, maybe another wild ago. Gorgeous. Yeah, so something 70s. Something um, something long and floaty with a big ruffle on the bottom. Something swooshy. Yeah. Right, yes. last two. Um, so I'm getting to the end. Although there is more coming in the post. I haven't stopped. I've gone a bit mad. But, you oh, know. Oh, dear. When it starts, it starts. <laughs> um, these two are from the lovely Harriet at Saw Me Sunshine. So these are two dead stock fabrics that she had in her range. Um, so they're X designer dead stocks. And again, I just fell in love with the colour. So I've gone for a black this time. Ooh. But very 70s. So very I just love that. loved They had it in a red. And I had the red in my basket. And then I changed my mind to the purple. Because I don't wear an awful lot of purple. But they're both black backgrounds. But the the flowers are a slightly different colourway. Um, so I think this is, an, this is a viscose. And I think this is just a beautiful fabric. So again, another 70s gown i'm thinking something long and it's really quite a structured fabric it's got a really good weight to it it's not yeah. see-through or anything like that so i just think it would be lovely look at the drape on that look it's beautiful really lovely do you know i'd be tempted with those last two uh -huh. um, to, to actually make separate so a peasant style blouse and then a maxi skirt that when you wore them together would look like a maxi dress but you could still wear them separately because I think they're such lovely prints that yeah. being able to pair them with different style top or, or different style bottoms would be nice. Yeah that because this would be a beautiful skirt itself you know like a big big yeah. maxi skirt with multi frills and then the summer you could just pair it with a vest and flip flops or something like that so exactly. like I said it's all undecided but this next fabric is probably the one that is singing to me the most. So I think if there's a save the best for last. If, if there's a decision to be made, it's about what I make with this one because I think this is probably my favourite. So it's another dead stock X designer fabric, which is um, another viscose, and wow. I just think it is just stunning. So look at that. So it's crying it's out. Amazing. It's crying out for something in that big bold print. I might make another Liberty dress. So that can you know that V neck Liberty maxi dress. Yeah. Out of this, I just think it would be because it, it should show off it's the big print. Gorgeous. Isn't it beautiful? I just love the color yeah. and I love the uh, the the red with the teal really makes the flowers pop. I'll let you have a look. Yeah. <laughs> So that oh, one is my favourite. If it was me, I think I would make a kimono, like <gasps> a, a, like a light jacket style kimono. You know when in the summer you just want to tuck something over a dress or over a vest top or something like that? Yes. Um, but it would just mean that it would be blocks, big panels of the fabric so yeah. you really see it and you wouldn't be it in, in lots in, of gowns yeah. and that sort of thing. That's what I'd so it definitely needs something needs some thinking about this one because like Rachel said because it's such a big print a big wallpaper print you do need something that's not too fussy not got too many gathers on it that you can really see the fabric so I'm, I've got lots of plans um, there'll be lots of pattern reviews there'll be lots of stuff coming as you can see I'm very eager ready to go I've got all the fabrics just need to make some decisions now so I'm going to hand you over to Rachel and she's going to show you some lovely fabrics that she's bought for a very different project. So, ready? One, two, three. And we're back. <laughs> back at my house. And after all of that lovely, colourful, riot of colourfulness, um, bless you. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm still sneezing. That's okay. That's, this is real. You can't get more real life than this. This is, you know, low editing. <laughs> As it happens, hopefully you enjoy feeling like you're actually here with us. <laughs> I've, had to, I've had to move locations because of Wi-Fi issues as well. Yes, but I think um, we're all used to that, aren't we? Even like watching TV and watching news and stuff. We're so used to watching things through a screen. We're so used to watching technology try and uh, you know keep up with what's going on at the moment. So this is normal. This is the really normal. It's all good. Yeah. 
So I have got some sensible things to show you and it's just for one um, project because I'm making a coat for my husband and it's actually inspired by somebody that I saw on Instagram and I'll actually link below because I can't remember the name now um, but she actually made um, the Merchant and Mills uh, TN31 Parker um, and this is actually a women's pattern um, but she made it one for her and one for her her partner and uh, and it made me think well there's absolutely no reason why it can't be unisex and when I showed my hubby pictures of her partner um, then he was like oh yes I definitely want that one um, so we're going for kind of a smarter version because obviously it's got this bomber, neck, bomber jacket uh, neck on it the ribbing on the neck which I think gives you the perfect opportunity to play with that smart, casual, you know, vibe and kind of mix things up a little bit. So the fabric that we've chosen is from Fabworks. And um, hold on, because I've got lining threads hanging off of everything. Oh, it's all stuck to me now. Uh, so we've <laughs> gone for this midnight blue, this dark navy wool. So if I can hold that closer to the camera, see if you can see it focus on it um so it's basically um feels a bit like a melton it's not a melton but it's got that kind of very flat smooth kind of face to it as if it's been fulled um yeah. and it's quite heavy it's quite a heavy weight and because of its high wool content it's quite scratchy too so you do have the option to just uh by lining for the pockets um, or to line the whole thing and I was planning on just doing the pockets but the last minute I thought no I'm going to get lining for the whole thing just in case and I'm so pleased that I did because as soon as I felt this I thought you wouldn't want to wear that kind of not that he's going to be walking around with a coat and nothing else underneath it <laughs> that would be very weird um, but it, it's it kind of feels like it catches on things sometimes you know what I mean you get that sort of friction that um that isn't always great so a lining just means it's nice and smooth um but the quality of this is so good that i thought a lining will also kind of elevate it a little bit um yeah so i've got three meters of this one um and then the lining that i have um which has all of this hanging off of it so let me just see if i can get all of that out of the way first <laughs> so the lining was called um, Antique Ink and you can see why. So it's got this lovely blue, but it's also got gold tones on it. And I think the movement in it, it does look very inky, doesn't it? It's really, really yeah. lovely. Um, and uh, and so uh, Fabworks do a great range of coat fabrics, but they also have a great range of lining fabrics as well. And I think if you're looking for something that's not just your average acetate lining, if you want something a little bit interesting, they're definitely a good place to go. More planes than patterns, but I always prefer a plain lining anyway, I think. Um, but, yeah. um, but this is um, really, really lovely. So that's to line it. And then, uh, also from Merchant and Mills, let me grab these. I've got the drawstring for the waist channel. So they do a range of drawstrings in kind of uh, your standard colours. Um, so this is the one that I picked. Um, and they also do these beautiful buttons that have been actually dyed to match their oilskin fabrics, but it just so happens that it was the perfect colour for me. So I've got six of these and three metres of the drawstring. Um, but yes. then the ribbing I actually got from eBay. So this is the ribbing to make the, uh, the neck band. Um, and the reason why I got it from eBay is because I wanted something, because it's such a heavyweight coat fabric, I wanted something a bit more substantial. So uh -huh. such a sort of ribbing that you'd put on a t-shirt or on a sweatshirt is not really going to be up to it. So this is actually uh, knitted, so it's that kind of more woolly texture. Um, and, yes. uh, and I think that it's, it's much more substantial. And what I like about it is you never know when you're trying to match things like navy, Till it arrives, you just never know if it's going to be the right thing or not. And this is a lighter shade of blue than the coat fabric, but it actually matches quite well with the drawstring. So I think the two are going to tie each other together. 
Um, and when I laid the lining on the fabric and the ribbing and the buttons and everything together, it just looks like it went really well. So I'm really, really pleased about that. And I'm hoping I can get started on that this weekend. So we really hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's a, this is obviously going to be a temporary setup, fingers crossed. But we would be really lovely. We would really love to be able to come and do something in person. But if this is all we can get for you for the moment, hopefully you guys don't mind. So we hope you enjoyed the fabric haul. And we'll see you again, hopefully, with another video. Bye.